Hi, I'm Philip, and today I'll be talking about revisiting TCP congestion control throughput models and fairness properties at scale. This is joint work with my colleagues at CMU. Most data we send on the internet today is governed by congestion control algorithms like Nurino, Cubic, or Google's BBR. Consequently, there's a lot of past work evaluating various properties of these CCAs, such as throughput or fairness. However, most past work usually evaluates CCAs with just tensor flows and at 100 Mbps bandwidths. This is because of an implicit assumption that congestion occurs primarily at the edge of the internet, where you'd see just tensor flows and 100 Mbps bandwidths. However, recent work shows that there's congestion even at the core of the internet, where you'd see thousands of flows at 10 Gbps bandwidths. So a natural question now is, do the CCA properties that we believe to be true at the edge of the internet continue to hold at the scale of the core of the internet? Well, if Appenzella at all are to be believed, the answer is not always. Back in 2004, they showed that CCA buffering needs can actually change drastically at scale. So in the edge setting, uh, the rule of thumb was that for TCP in Urino, you needed at least one BDP or bandwidth delay product worth of buffer in your router to fully utilize the link. However, Appenzella et al. showed that in the calling setting, when you have thousands of TCP flows, you can get away with just a fraction of that buffer to fully utilize the link. This was a big deal for router manufacturers who could now use just 4 megabytes of SRAM in their routers instead of a much larger 256 megabytes of SRAM. Well, now that we've seen that CCA buffering needs can change so much at scale, we ask what other CCA properties can change at scale. Specifically, we investigate whether CCA throughput models and fairness properties continue to hold at the scale of the core of the internet. For the rest of the talk, I will first discuss the test bit we use to evaluate our CCAs and then move on to our evaluations of the Mathis throughput model and PBR's fairness properties, and finally conclude the talk. The test bit we use is a standard dumbbell topology with 10 senders on the left, sending data to 10 receivers on the right. All data passes through a best software switch in the middle, which acts as our bottleneck link. For experiments in the edge link setting, we use 10 to 50 flows with a bottleneck link of 100 Mbps, and for experiments in the calling setting, we use 1,000 to 5,000 flows with a bottleneck bandwidth of 10 Gbps. Now, the Mathis model predicts Nurino's throughput as a function of its RTT and loss rate. We evaluate it by measuring the prediction error, which is how much the predicted bandwidth deviates from the actual bandwidth of the flow. In the edge setting, the Mathis model is quite accurate, with a median error less than 10%. However, at the score of the internet, the Mathis model turns out to be inaccurate, with median errors greater than 40% across flow counts. And the reason for this is that at scale, the packet loss rate ends up diverging from the congestion window halving rate. What I mean by this is that in the edge setting, every packet drop pretty much corresponds to one congestion window halving. However, in the cold link setting, multiple packet drops can result in just one congestion window halving. So if we look at a graph of the ratio of packet losses to congestion window halvings versus flow count, we can see that in the edge link setting, it's pretty much one to one. However, in the core link setting, up to nine packet losses can result in just one congestion window halving. Next, let's take a look at BBR's fairness when it's competing with other BBR flows. The metric we use to measure fairness is Jane's fairness index, which ranges from zero to one. The higher it is, the fairer it is. And in the edge setting, BBR is known to be quite fair to other BBR flows. However, in the cold setting, we find that BBR becomes unfair to other BBR flows, with JFIs as low as 0.4. Now, why does BBR end up becoming unfair at scale? Well, BBR developers hypothesize that the reason for BBR's fairness in the edge setting is due to flow synchronization. Interestingly, Appenzeller et al. discovered that TCP Nurino flows completely desynchronize at scale. So we wonder if something similar happens with BBR flows desynchronizing, leading to unfairness. However, we also wonder if synchronization is really the determining factor behind BBR's fairness, since this was only a hypothesis presented by the BBR designers. We believe these are both open questions that require further investigation. Next, let's look at an experiment where the results we see at scale 
match the trends we see in the edge link setting. This is when BBR competes with Nurino or Cubic Flows. And where it all showed that in the edge link setting in deep buffered networks, one BBR flow can take up to 40% of link bandwidth when competing with tens of other Nurino or Cubic Flows. And we find that at scale, this result stays exactly the same, even if it's one BBR flow competing with thousands of Nurino or Cubic Flows. Now, while it's the exact same result, we were still surprised by this for two reasons. The first is that in the data center setting, which is shallow buffered, BBR is known to completely starve Nurino or Cubic Flows. However, our experiments show that at scale, BBR's behavior is actually closer to what it displays in the Edgelink setting than what it displays in the data center setting. Secondly, the implication of BBR's unfairness is quite different in the Edgelink setting versus the Colink setting. At the BBR being unfair at the edge just uh, means that it's unfair to tens of other flows. So this would be roommates or office mates. However, BBR being unfair at the core of the internet means that it's unfair to thousands of other competing flows, which could represent an entire neighborhood or an entire corporate campus. So the magnitude of the unfairness changes with scale. We also investigate various other CCA properties in the paper. Uh, by and large, at scale, they match the trends we see in the Edgelink setting, or you can read our paper to find out more. In conclusion, we show that CCA throughput models and fairness properties are different at the scale of the core of the internet versus the edge of the internet. Consequently, this highlights the need for expansive evaluation of CCAs at scale so we can make better decisions about which CCAs to deploy and where. Thank you.